Hi guys, my name is Brad and Chi. We're doing presentations of the Marimba. We got a lot of things to cover. We only have four minutes, so let's go. So the origins of the Marimba. The Marimba originates in West Africa. As you can see, it's a, made of a wooden bar suspended on a frame over some kind of object that amplifies the sound and resonates. In this case, it's made out of wood and the bottom thing object is made out of a gourd, the fruit. Very cool. Um, yeah, that's its presence in Africa, but it only became into its own in Latin America, where the instrument was transplanted over from West Africa into Latin America due to the Spanish Empire and the tra transatlantic slave trade. Yeah, so it developed in Latin America, was used in Mayan festivals, most particularly known in Mexico and Guatemala. Really cool instrument, um, mainly known there, but it was also transplanted into American marching band music as well as contemporary classical music and contemporary Japanese music. Very interesting. So, um, here's the design of the marimba. We have bars made of rosewood, a frame that holds it up, uh, resonators on the bottom which sustain the note and provide uh, uh, amplify some of the overtones, and the string uh, that you can't see in this picture, but there's a string that suspends them in air. Um, if you do not uh, suspend these bars in air, it will make a garbage sound. For here's an example, I have I played a room with broken strings, and then when you don't when the string when the bars are not suspended in air, the bars just directly on the resonator, and it sounds like this. It sounds like garbage. So you have to suspend it in air with a string. Uh, sometimes we use napkins because we're lazy, but we didn't have enough money to replace the string in marching band. Okay, so here's the physics of the room. The primary oscillator is the bar. It's made out of rosewood. It provides the frequency that is amplified by our resonator. It's made out of metal. Um, so yeah, the resonator um, is a, clo a tube that's open on one end and closed on the other. Um, as you remember, it, we learned in this class, um, therefore the wavelength can be half as long. So if, there, if the bottom wasn't closed, then this, remember, this resonator would need to be twice as long. But thanks to the fact that it's got a close on the bottom, it's got a lid on the bottom, it can be half the length and it makes the sound resonate and sustain Beautifully. Without the resonators, it sounds like garbage. Moving on. Okay, so um, the overtones pleasant on a marimba are the fundamental fourth harmonic and tenth harmonic. What that uh, correlates to on a piano, for example, is if we had, um, let's say we had C, and then we had a C, two octaves above C, and then we have an octave and a major third above that. So we have C, C, and E. This is a lot less interesting than a wind instrument. For example, on a wind instrument, you'd have a ton of the early harmonics, and it gives you a very growly characteristic sound. The marimba can sound a bit hollow because we only have three harmonics and they're spread out pretty far apart. Um, but that's just how it works. Here's an example of striking the bar in different places. Um, that's what the spectrogram looks like. If you strike right above center, which is uh, the diagram on the right, you end up with that beautiful sound. Okay, we're out of time. So <laughs> uh, what I find so interesting about the marimba is it's the confluence of rhythmic uh, drive and intention like a drum set, but it also delivers notes because it's a pitched instrument. So here's an example where I'm able to add some rhythmic interest, uh, but also um, have notes. That's a pretty simple example where I'm playing an outlining chord on marimba and um, it provides rhythmic drive, but it also gives you the chord information. Here's an example of I'm playing something really exciting by using four mallets and I'm able to do a really interesting rhythm and also play the melody at the same time. Really cool concept, only available on marimba. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I have no answer questions. Uh, bye.